Hello everyone. Uh, today I will talk about uh, vector uh, autoregressive models and if we have time we will also cover vector error, error correction models. So as usual I would like to give a recap of what we discussed last lecture and if you remember last week we talked about dynamic uh, models. We, we talked mainly about distributed lag models and um, autoregressive models, how to, to transform that to autoregressive model and then how if we combine both together uh, we would have an ARDL model or autoregressive distributed lag models. We also discussed the idea of stationarity and what it means for uh, regression in uh, time series regression and we explain uh, why do we need to uh, avoid um, using or running regression on non-stationary data? Um, we learned how to detect full stationarity. We learned how to graphically uh, look at the series and roughly speaking, um, say whether it, it looks, it is likely to be stationary or non-stationary, but in all cases we explain we need to do a formal test and we discuss um, ADF uh, test, uh, unit root test, um, augmented Dickey Fuller uh, uh, test. Today we will uh, continue our uh, discussion on different models that we can use with time series data. And today I'll focus mainly, as I said, on uh, vector autoregressive models. And uh, if we uh, get a chance, we also may cover vector error correction models. So with vector um, autoregressive models, it starts first with the autoregressive process. So in time series, we um, could regress um, a time series in time t on itself in time t minus 1. And that's what we call autoregressive process. So yt here depends on a constant mu uh, 0 plus um, phi 1 yt minus 1. So basically what we are trying to say here is that um, a given series depends in time t, the value it takes in, 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 in time t depends on its value in time t minus 1. It's like you're saying um, the unemployment rate, for example, in 2020, well, that's really uh, extreme because of the, uh, um, the, the, the pandemic, but let's say, um, you say um, the, the unemployment rate in 2019, uh, let's say, is likely to be or depend on the level of unemployment rate in 2018, so the year before t minus 1. Of course, plus some, some error, which is epsilon t. Epsilon t here, we assume this is a white noise um, uh, error, which means it has constant mean and variance, and also it's independently distributed or meaning uh, it's not autocorrelated. So the equation we see on the screen now, uh, it represents an AR1 or a first order autoregressive process. So AR1, one here stands for the number of lags. So as you can see, we uh, only went back in time, only one, one lag, uh, yt minus one. And if that phi coefficient is less than one in the absolute value, that means this process is stationary. Of course, there is no reason why we can't go beyond uh, one lag. So the if we have only one lag, this will be uh, AR1. If we have two lags, we would have AR2 or a second order uh, autoregressive process, which means yt in this case will depend on, as we said, constant, call it mu zero or call it whatever and then yt minus one and yt minus two and of course plus some uh, sort of um, uh, white noise error uh, epsilon t of course we can make this more general case um, for a R, um, arp or uh, uh, autoregressive process uh, of order p p is the number of lags that you want to go back in time so uh, in this case, uh, yt depends on, again, a constant mu uh, zero and then uh, phi one, yt minus one, and then you go back in time up to 
um, lag P, so YT, T minus P, and of course, plus some, uh, some sort of error. So this is autoregressive process, which we already discussed when we talked about the ARDL model last week. So what is new today is that we're going to move from discussing uh, regression models where you have only one equation into your model uh, to the case where we have more than one equation. So when we talk about VAR model, we basically talk about um, a system of regression model with one more than one equation. And that depends on how many um, endogenous variables are in the model. And I know the word endogenous, you might have heard it, heard me saying it for the first time now, but basically what it say, it's um, say uh, how many dependent variables you have in your system. So how many variables will appear on the left hand side of your equations in your equations. So in this system, let's say we have, if we have a bivariate, bivariate bar, which means we have two variables, let's say y1 and, and uh, or y and x. So basically, um, before we had only y on the left hand side, only one dependent variable. So we had only one equation with one dependent variable on the left hand side. And then the regressor or the independent variable appears on the right hand side. In a VAR equation or in a VAR model, on a VAR system, vector autoregressive uh, model or system, you don't really need to worry uh, about uh, exogenous variables or which variables should appear on the right hand side because if you have three variables, you will have you would have um, three equations. So um, one equation per variable. So what I'm talking about endogenous variables. So variables that are explained in your system. So if we have y1, y2, y3, these all are three endogenous variables. So we'd have three equations. So one equation that explain y1, one e another equation that explain the behavior of y2, and the third equation which explain the behavior of y3. And in each one of those equations, what's going to appear on the right hand side, because this is an autoregressive uh, model, meaning that y1 in time t will depend on itself in time t minus 1, going back to time t minus p. But also you will include the lags of the other variables in the system. So it's also going to depend on yt, um, y2 t minus uh, one, etc., going back um, um, uh, to p uh, number of lags, and then the same thing for y3. So the bottom line here is that we're not really, uh, we no longer concerned about um, exogenous variables because um, all variables now are like endogenous in the system, meaning that each variable will appear once on the left hand side. And one important point to notice is that now we having a system of equations. So we're not having a one equation model like the case so far. Up to this week, we always have been discussing, we we, we, what we discussed in the past, we, it always focus on uh, one equation system. But today, we, when, when we talk about a VAR model, so we have a system of equations. So anyway, so let's now look at, at an example. So if we have two variables, let's say this is, that's why it's called bivariate model. So we have y1 and uh, y2. And as I said, these two, both of them are endogen endogenous variables, which means they will appear uh, once at uh, or on the left hand side of the equation. And on the right hand side, you will see the same variable uh, with lagged um, uh, uh, values. Let's say if we have p equal one or only one lag, so that means on the left, on the right hand side, as this equation shows, you will see uh, y1 t minus one, but also it depends on y2, the other variable, y2 in time t minus one, of course, plus some, uh, some error. The same thing applies to yt, the second endogenous variable in our system. So we have y y2 in time t depends on y2, uh, y1 in time t minus one, and y2 in time t minus one plus uh, some errors. So how many parameters we need to estimate in this system? We have uh, six parameters. 
beta 1 0 beta 1 1 b and, and alpha 1 1 and also beta 2 0 alpha 2 1 and beta 2 1 so these are six parameters to to estimate if we move from um uh, for the same bivariate model by adding one extra lag so moving from uh, var, bivariate var one one here is the number of lags to bivariate two where we have two lags in the system so you would have 10 unknown parameters to estimate and as you add lags or as you add more variables the number of parameters need estimation will will grow faster of course that there could be higher order var model where you could have not by not only bivariate model you could have uh, more than that so you could have more variables more endogenous variables in your system so you could have a multivariate system where you have let's say if i have a four equation you will have uh, sorry four variables endogenous variables then you would have four equations in your system and and so on and also as i said as you increase the number of variables and the number of lags then you will have so many parameters uh, to estimate and that can cause problems because you lose degrees of freedom and in some uh, occasion where you don't have uh, your, your your sample is not large enough you might uh, have a problem uh, you run out of degrees of freedom and uh, you're losing so many observations because every time you add a lag so basically you drop one observation or you lose one observation and and so on so um so at least this is the construction now we are familiar or we know what the construction look like you could uh, present this in a matrix notation so rather than let's say if i have four var um, model or uh, um, um, four variables in my var model that would mean i would have to have uh, four equations and that case as you add variables it might looks very complicated and not very um, good way to represent your model and that's why we use the uh, matrix notation so we can provide uh, or represent um, uh, our var model in a more compact and con concise way so in this example here you will see uh, this is a multivariate var so it could be any number of vars but this is an example i just added um bivariate model which can be represented in one equation um, in a matrix notation using um, uh, uh, you can see we have yt which is kind of vector of dependent variables we have y, y1t and y2t uh, on the other side you would have betas are these are the um, uh, coefficients and um, uh, beta 0 is, is, is a column vector of the constants uh, uh, term and, um, and and beta 1 is a matrix 2 by 2 um uh, for the coefficient that we need to estimate and again this is just an example of how to present um a bivariate uh, uh ar1 so we have two variables y1 and y2 and only one lag uh, in in a matrix notation so um again you can do that for more than two variables so um, in, in the more general case, you can have invariate uh, var p, p here, the number of lags, m is the number of uh, variables you include into the model. So comparing this with what we said uh, in the slide before, so we had only one lag, but here I can have, I can add more lags up to p uh, 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 lags. And uh, also we can have more than, uh, than two variables. But as we said here, the main issue here is that the more lags you introduce, the more variables you have in your model, then the more data or you consume, or um, you might have a, a issue with an issue with um, degrees of freedom. Freedom. So uh, in some models, which we might not discuss in this uh, lecture on this this semester, is you could actually have a system of endogenous variables and then you include also some exogenous variables so you could have um for example this is um again a, a, a kind of a bivariate model where i'm just using the matrix notation to uh, um, uh, present this model so as i said we could have a um, var model with an exogenous variable so you let's say if you have 
two endogenous variables. Uh, so the two var both variables will um, each variable will and will appear once on the left hand side. We could also have an x variable or an exogenous variable. And as I said, this is something you could estimate. Uh, but again, this is um, beyond the scope of this uh, lecture. So I'm not going to discuss this case with you, but just say um, I'm just saying that to make you aware of the um, uh, the possibility of having some sort of an exogenous variable. In that sense, it's exogenous because it's determined outside the, the system. So um, in other words, it is not going to appear uh, on the left hand side in your system, in any of the equations. So it's not going to have an equation in your system that explain its behavior. So it's kind of given to the system or it determined exogenously or outside your, uh, your system. So um, we already discussed this briefly. So the idea here is that the number of observation, if you have T observations available and a full set of lagged variables, the number of observations that will be available for your estimation will be T minus P, because as I said, every time you introduce one lag, then you that means you would lose some um, observations, um, one observation. So increasing the lag number, that means um, you, um, you lose uh, more observations. Um, and also in terms of the estimation, we still use OLS estimation, so it's very convenient. That's why maybe uh, VAR models are very uh, common and very popular, because it's very simple to estimate, because what you do, you use OLS, the same thing we learned before, and you go through one, by, one um, equation by equation uh, uh, using uh, OLS. Because we said we, if we have two variables, two indigenous variables, we have two equations. If you have four endogenous variables, you will have uh, four equations, and and you um, estimate these one by one uh, using OLS like usual, like the way we used to do before. An actual question would be how to choose the number of lags, how to choose the lag length. The optimal lag length is kind of you would have to 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 estimate or to decide on the number of lags that you should include, you are here choosing between the curse of dimensionality and the re uh, reduced model. Meaning, if I introduce too many lags, then I'm losing degrees of freedom. If I am introducing too few lags, then I will face um, um, the autocorrelated errors or correlation into my errors. So that's why you need to choose the optimal lag length. And this is something we can rely on information criteria to help us to do that. So we would choose, we would choose the number of lags in our VAR models that uh, minimize the value of the a given information criteria, it could be a kike or etc. any other information uh, criteria.